Everyone is talking about the new 200 megapixel sensor on the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, but I have a few questions. First of all, is 200 megapixels really necessary and does it actually add anything when you look at the photos taken on this 200 megapixel sensor? And secondly, does it destroy the 48 megapixel sensor that is on the iPhone 14 Pro? And in this video, we're going to find out. So there are already a whole bunch of comparisons, literally comparing every aspect of these two camera systems side by side. Most notably, obviously, is the differences in zoom, but I wanted to put the spin on from a professional photographer. And I want to mainly focus on that key aspect, the 200 megapixels versus 48 megapixels in sensor detail. We will touch briefly on the other lenses available on the phones, but everyone knows size matters. It's the 200 megapixel sensor that's going to be the focus today. So I think it's probably worth noting that the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra probably should win throughout this comparison, because obviously this is a current generation 2023 phone, whereas obviously the iPhone 14 Pro is last year's generation model. But I think it's just always super interesting to see just how much the performance has increased on the Samsung, or maybe not even at all. First off, we're just gonna shoot absolutely standard, like 12 megapixel photos. Like let's just take a snap here of this space like this really cool market, Leadenhall Market here in London. This is the standard mode. This is the full resolution photos that are pixel bin down to 12 megapixel shots on both camera systems. So you're on the iPhone 14 Pro, you've got 48 megapixel uh, photos being binned down to 12 megapixels and then 200 on the Samsung. I'm gonna show you these images a little bit different to how I have done in the past. So I'm gonna show you both images shot one after the other, and then I'm gonna zoom into 120% on each image and show them side by side. So you can see uh, this one here, iPhone 14 Pro shot, the S23 Ultra shot, nothing major difference in terms of the kind of image and exposure. Seemingly Samsung does like to produce a brighter image than the iPhone. I do think here though, you can see that actually it's seemingly that the S23 Ultra in standard JPEG mode does look sharper than uh, the iPhone 14, which is obviously not a good thing, especially when it comes to mobile photography because images are already very sharp. I think same story really across most of these images, to be honest. I think Samsung seemingly likes to saturate the image ever so slightly more and definitely is a little on the sharper side. Um, we have a couple of images here of St. Paul's in London and you can really see the saturation, particularly in this one. Um, the S23 Ultra is quite a bit more saturated than the iPhone shot, as you can see, Side by side here, a lot more yellow, uh, a lot more pop from the uh, the sunset kicking through in this image here. One more totally separate lighting situation for this one, a uh, bit of artificial light inside here, um, and really the same story, bit more saturation on the S23 Ultra, and seemingly a little bit brighter as well. This really comes down to preference, and to be honest, I think both of these are really strong options, but with the S23 Ultra kind of just over sharpening these standard 12 megapixel JPEGs. Okay, so back home now to debrief some of those shots for you. I think to be honest, the iPhone 14 Pro probably just had the edge for me when it comes to those main 12 megapixel pixel binned rear facing camera photos. For me personally, the phone with the least sharpening is going to mo win most of the time, or at least if other things are equal when it comes to smartphone photography. Before any Samsung fans get really angry and start shouting at me in the comments, this is far from the full story. So now we talked about the main way that people are going to shoot with these phones, obviously that main standard rear-facing camera with no additional sort of customizations. Let's talk about the ways that you can potentially shoot with that main rear-facing camera. First of all, the Samsung beats out the iPhone based on simply choice and control. With the iPhone 14 Pro, you have three ways of shooting. So obviously you have that 12 megapixel mode that we've already talked about. You then can also shoot raw and you could shoot in two flavors of raw. You've got 12 megapixel raws and full, uh, very large file size, but full 48 megapixel raw photos. On the Samsung though, things are a little bit more involved. So of course you can shoot that 12 megapixel mode, like again, we've already discussed. You can then also bump that up though. So you can shoot a 50 megapixel JPEG, which is obviously kind of pixel binning, but not reducing it down from 200 to 12. And then you've got another 200 megapixel JPEG mode. So you can shoot in full resolution JPEGs. And then in addition to this, you can shoot an expert pro raw mode and you can get 50 megapixel raw. So that's kind of equivalent to that 50 of 
48 megapixel RAW on the iPhone 14 Pro, and you can shoot in 12 megapixel RAWs as well. The only thing you can't do here is shoot RAW in 200 megapixel photos. Okay, let's dive into some of these examples. So this one, iPhone 14 Pro, 12 megapixel. This is the S23 Ultra in the same situation. This one here, 50 megapixel. We're going up a bit in resolution here, as you can see. So that's the standard JPEG 50 megapixel. Already, I have to admit, I'm actually starting to really, really like this. Seems like there's a lot of editing that I would have done in the raw process here. There's a lot of the sharpening is decreased and things are looking really nice. I mean, the same story here. This is the 200 megapixel and things are even kind of looking even nicer, to be honest. Uh, at kind of first judgment or her hearing about the 200 megapixel sensor, I didn't think this was going to make a lot of difference. I thought it was just going to be additional detail, but it seems like actually Samsung is doing a lot of really good good things in this file. Here's a couple of side by sides with the iPhones. So this is with uh, the standard uh, 12 megapixel compared to the 200. Then this is the edited raw out of the 48 megapixel camera. And this definitely looks relatively comparable um, in my opinion. Uh, but I think what the exciting thing is, is essentially I would say that the 200 megapixel JPEG look like almost like you've taken an edited raw file, but you don't have to do any of that hard work. Here we go. Here's another one. So this is iPhone 14 Pro. 48 megapixel edited raw. Um, I've kind of kept the edit sort of fairly neutral, uh, but this is uh, with a bit of the sharpness decrease, that type of thing. Um, S23 Ultra, here's the 48 megapixel JPEG. This is already relatively close. I do actually think this personally is my favorite mode um, because the file sizes aren't ridiculous. They're about 10 megabytes in terms of JPEG size, so they're not crazy, but you are getting a lot of benefit from that extra sensor size. Here you go. This one's the 200. Again, uh, kind of the, a lot of the benefits, like it's a bit softer, which is a really nice result. Like I'm super glad glad that Samsung has sort of decided to process the photos this way. The only thing though is that these are huge, like they're 16,000 pixels wide and each file is like 40 megabytes, which for JPEGs is I have to admit, pretty like crazy. And then here we have side by side, both edited raw shots. You can see um, both in that 48 megapixel mode. I'm not going to keep going to showing comparison after comparison because I kind of think this is has been illustrative of the point. My favorite mode, I think, is that 48 megapixel JPEG. I really wish iPhone would let you do that. I did want to cover off low light performance because obviously there it's a pretty key feature for both of these phones. For all these images here, the Samsung is on the left and the iPhone is on the right. And I, I do think that low light is actually really good on both of these phones now. Like we, we probably are getting to the point where low light performance um, is not going to be a limiting factor for most flagship cameras. There are a few caveats to the performance. I would say that the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is far better when there is some available light in the frame. The iPhone does better when there is hardly any light in the frame. Like this image here was essentially completely dark. And personally, I think it is a better, more pleasing image on the iPhone. And something I would say actually is my biggest complaint about the iPhone in terms of its low light performance is it just doesn't give you very much control. So as you can see here, using uh, this clip for an example, the, uh, the iPhone only really kicks in when it thinks you should be shooting light mode. And obviously it's doing that based on a, a certain amount of light in the frame, which kind of makes sense. But at the same time, the Samsung actually lets you uh, dictate when you want to shoot a night mode shot. And then it just uses its intelligence and AI to actually figure out what the best render for that image is. And I far prefer this as an option. I think it just gives you more control when you're shooting low light photos. In terms of zooms, I'm just going to give this to the Samsung here. Uh, obviously the iPhone 14 Pro covers you from ultra wide from 13 mil to 24 mil to a 70 mil lens. And that is obviously the same on the Samsung, but the Samsung also has uh, the, a 230 millimeter optical zoom. So you've got a 10X zoom on there. And obviously you can zoom right up to the space zoom feature, but for really overwhelmingly, uh, the zoom capability on the Samsung is just better than on the iPhone 14 Pro. I do also want to talk about video performance. All right, so here's the video between both phones. So I'm gonna scroll through the available zooms um, or some of the available zooms on each phone. I'm also going to compare low light and uh, normal light. So this is the iPhone 14 Pro. In my opinion, anyway, I think the uh, it is actually looked like the king of smartphone uh, video. I don't think Android is quite there. For some reason, somehow, um, the iPhone just continues to get it right every single time with video. I think it's really fantastic. I think the only time it falls apart is when you sometimes 
Uh, zoom, I don't think the ultra wide, uh, excuse me, I don't think the telephoto is quite up to the same performance as the main rear facing. I think the main rear facing this lens you're seeing right now is absolutely gorgeous. This is the S23 Ultra. To be honest, I do think there's a common theme uh, between these two phones, which these are super close, really. You know, like the uh, this kind of optical performance on the S23 Ultra, I don't think is as good as the iPhone 14 Pro. The iPhone 14 Pro clearly, in my opinion, king of video, but the S23 Ultra video is really good, and I don't think you're gonna uh, actually, you know, be too worried about it if you don't have an iPhone 14 Pro directly next to it to compare, if that makes sense. I think where the S23 Ultra really comes into its own is the optical zoom performance as we discussed. So obviously you've got that 3x zoom, which obviously the iPhone has a comparable one. You can see it's sort of snapping into quality here. And then also, of course, you have a 10x optical zoom, which is roughly a 230 millimeter zoom. And there's obviously nothing like that on the iPhone 14 Pro. I have to admit, I didn't even worry about including 8K video in this comparison. Obviously the iPhone doesn't shoot it, but for my in my experience, it's really noisy. And to be honest, nobody can even view 8K video pretty much mostly anyway. Again, just because I think it's useful uh, to also see it side by side so you don't have to flip back and forward and kind of guess what it looks like. Here's the side by side. Uh, biggest real difference to stick out to me is one, slightly the sharpening, but also the color as it seems like the iPhone 14 Pro is actually a little bit more saturated than the S23 Ultra in video, um, or at least in this particular scenario. Um, but yeah, I think I would give the edge here to the iPhone 14 Pro when it comes to video. And then in terms of nighttime video or low light video, Here's a fairly dark shot, obviously lots of artificial light present, but obviously the night sky was essentially totally dark here. Um, and you can see kind of the biggest difference for me anyway, uh, in between these two shots, and you'll see when we get onto the S23 Ultra, is the iPhone is happier leaving things looking darker. So this the overall scene on the iPhone 14 Pro is darker here. Whereas, like I said, if we switch to the S23 Ultra, it's trying to boost the signal just a little bit higher than it is on the iPhone 14 Pro, and that comes with uh, increased noise. It's definitely not bad, and these are relatively close, but I do think overall I'd just have to give to the edge to the iPhone 14 Pro, especially when we zoom in here, you can see how much noise is present in this shot. Just something I am super, super buzzed for is I have a comparison here. This is a low light shot to basically show the artificial light haloing that goes on with the iPhone 14 Pro and has plagued previous, you know, that's not just exclusive to iPhone, but the iPhone is particularly prone to it. Look at these lens flares here from these artificial lights. Like, it's just absolutely awful. It's been like it, like it for a long time. And it's been an actual tangible improvement um, on the S23 Ultra. There you go. I just dropped the uh, rental bike that I was using here. But you can see that on the S23 Ultra, you know, regardless, I think, of what you think of the quality of this shot, obviously, we've discussed low light video already, but you can see dramatically that there is much less haloing going on. This is a massive win. I've talked about this a lot on the channel. I hate the artificial haloing that goes on uh, on the iPhone. So massive props to Samsung for improving the lens quality on these phones and trying to reduce this. So that, guys, is that two fantastic camera systems and I think both really are worthy of your money. If you're asking for which phone can produce the best of the best images, personally I think this is almost like a mix of the two. I do love the 48 megapixel raw mode on the iPhone 14 Pro. You get tons of data to play around with but you do have more scope and more choice options available on that main uh, rear facing camera. I think really if there's any takeaway here is that I would really really like an option on the iPhone 14 Pro to be able to shoot in 48 megapixel JPEGs, which sit around hopefully that 10 megabyte file size, which is similar to the Samsung, but you're getting a lot of the benefit without a lot of the negatives, like the sharpening and such from that sensor. In terms of a clear winner, I don't really think there is one. You just need to pick which you feel like is right for you. Maybe you really kind of really want that 10X zoom, and obviously you're gonna to want to go for the Samsung, or maybe you prefer iOS. I mean, both of these camera systems are fantastic. Let me know what you think down below in the comments, and I'll catch you next time.